Do you want to hear something tragically sad? I feel like half of you are going to be like, hell yeah, Mars is square Pluto and Saturn and Jupiter. Tell me more. And half of you are going to be like, hell no, I don't want to deal with any more of this shit. Okay. <laughs> so the, regardless, something that just happened, I recorded an incredible video for you all just now discussing the new moon and Leo using the astrology chart and did not even actually freaking record it. So I'm just going to move forward because guess what? my moon is in Aries and Mars is with me. So let's just do this. Let's do this. It's going to be amazing. And there's everything happens for a reason. Uh, thankfully, my client reading I did, did just record. So that's good. But <laughs> moving forward, <laughs> we're going to look at the new moon. Greetings, earthlings. Greetings, earthlings. Wisdom keepers. Wisdom seekers. Welcome back to Wisdom Drops. Yours are for daily drops of wisdom and savvy cat astrology. <laughs> my name is Tanya. And today, as I said, it's the new moon in Leo. We're looking at the astrology of it using the astrology chart. Okay, so this is very cool. If you want to actually understand more astrology, I'm going to be showing you concepts with my cursor on the astrological star map. So groovy, groovy indeed. Now, a couple quick announcements. So bear with me because it's worth hearing for those of you who actually care about this stuff. Number one, if you are not already a subscriber, and if you are, thank you. You should be if you resonate with my content. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell icon because I do put out videos every single day of the week. Okay, number two. I am offering an astrology course right now. It begins in October. If you want to authentically learn astrology and have the skill set yourself and are done with everybody just telling you everything all the time and you're just taking their word for it and you want to actually know this for yourself, I am your person to help you with that capacity building skill set if you resonate with my style. My style is also going to be a small group. I'm keeping it to about 10 students, I think, in this first class, because I think that's going to be compatible for the type of education that I want to provide you. You are not going to be sitting there listening to me the whole time if you're in this program. You're going to be with other people doing assigned things that I'm assigning for you in a Zoom room together. And that's going to be part of your process and actually mastering this content over three months. So there's going to be so many different diverse learning methods. It's really informed and engaging. I'm more than excited to be offering it because I want people to have this skill set. It's a gift. Once you understand astrology, you understand the essence of different things. I, I want to be as bold as to say, you understand the essence of the universe when you understand astrology. It is like the gods are talking and you as an astrologer now know how to understand them and work with them. And once you know how to work with the planets, they don't work against you. Okay. So there's that. Anyway, um, with that said, we're finally going to get to it. Thank you for your patience. Um, and like the vid, if it brings you value, put a comment down below, letting me know what you're doing with this new moon, all that good stuff. I'm going to share my screen now and open that up so you can see the actual new moon event. Today is officially a uh, waxing new moon. So congratulations. We made it to the other side. This is a gorgeous new moon. I've also done three videos total on this. If you want to see other perceptions of this, they all have their own vibe, each video I did. In this video, I'm going to be drawing on a lot of Mercury stuff that I didn't even talk about in my last vid, where I went into much more depth on Jupiter opposite Venus and some of the Mars aspects happening, especially the sexy trine to um, the moon itself. I mean, that's really gorge, you know. Um, so there's that to consider. And, you know, in this video, though, Mercury, let's talk about it because Mercury just went Kazemi, y'all. And if you don't know, now you know, because Mercury is actually, what is Kazemi? It's purified. Kazemi means when a planet conjuncts the sun, it's burned, it's scorched by the sun. It's like Mercury just got burned. It went to the gym, it went on a hike, and then it went home and uh, did some push ups, you know, and now it's coming out of it like, I'm strong, but I'm like, coming out of this like phase of being like turned into jello and like being absolutely scorched like the fat was burned you know and now mercury's coming out strong again and pure more mercury than ever because it just got purified and burned off what it didn't need anymore what didn't serve it anymore by the sun so at the time of the lunation itself at the time of this new moon mercury is a new and he's going or she because mercury doesn't have a gender it's actually a non-binary um planet, God, if you will, or goddess, depending, she is going into Virgo next. And that's like really born anew because we're talking about its own sign. Okay. Mercury rules Virgo. Okay. Mercury is the sign that rules Virgo and Gemini. Okay. So Mercury is purified and is about to be in this incredible placement for its highest expression of analytical thought processes, improvement energy. Okay. 
Uh, Virgo is the fixer upper energy. Why? Because it's mutable in modality. I just did a video on what modality is in astrology. It's short and sweet if you want to check it out. But it's mutable in its modality and it's earth element. So it's a, an improvement oriented energy because it's a mutable energy, but it's improving of what? The tangible third dimensional world, the real stuff in the world, the herbs, the foods, the functions of the world, Virgo. You know what I'm saying? So there's that to consider. So Mercury's going there. All of our thought processes are about to get a lot sharper. We're all about to get a lot more analytical. We're all about to get a lot more insightful when it comes to the details. Organization season has begun. People out there, we're all going to be feeling more on our organizational A-game. We're going to understand how different pieces come together. We're going to be able to be just more cranial in general, more communicative around those topics as well. Now, the new moon in Leo itself is really gorgeous because it has not a single negative aspect. I do not read in conjunctions, quintiles, biquintiles. They're not ancient uh, uh, expressions in astrology, so I just don't feel an inclination towards them. So anyway, though, it is receiving nothing but positive aspects by that standard in that there's this sexy, sexy, sexy trine from Mars. How gorgeous is that? You know what I'm saying? Like Mars in Aries. Why is that gorgeous? Mars, the action planet, the masculine planet, the planet of drive, willpower, accomplishment, hustle, get it, energy, you know? That's an Aries. It's exalt. It's like, well, it's happy there because it's in its own sign. It's in its own dignity of Aries. It rules Aries. And now it's in its own sign. So it's, it's happy there. It's doing powerful things. And why is it doing powerful things? Because it's sending nothing but good zhuzh all the way to this new moon in Leo. It's giving us more power to build what we want, to, to grow what we want. What are we growing? Love, romance, Leo, passion, uh, good ego, healthy ego, putting out our chest a little bit more, standing a little taller, standing in our goddess vibes, our God vibes, okay? Standing in our divinity, channeling in divine energy. All of that is Leo. Leo is the bold and the gold, you know? It's like Egyptian royalty all over the place because it's like that big and bold. It's ruled by the sun, y'all. And the sun is here at this new moon with the moon, of course, in a late degree of Leo. So we're learning how to come more into our heart chakra. Leo rules the heart. We're learning more how to come more into our passion of love. We are coming into more romantic experiences under this new moon, mark my words. Also, because Mars is the passion planet, the man, the male uh, passion planet between Mars and Venus, uh, the, the masculine and feminine principles of passion, it's sending nothing but supporting energy to that manifestation. There's some fire trine vibe, babe, and that's hot. Fire is passion, fire is spirit, fire is spunk, fire is accomplishment. Things are ripening now, y'all. Things are happening for you, I believe, all of us. I think it's really happening. What is Mars doing, though? It's criticizing, it's critiquing, it's activating a change. 90 degree angles, square. You see all those red lines? Those are squares, baby. That's 90 degree angles. Over here to Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter. Are you kidding me? It's literally, at the time of this new moon, in conflict, in tension with the gods of war, or excuse me, uh, the gods of uh, fate and time, uh, Saturn, the gods of transformation, death, and rebirth from that death, Kalima energy, Pluto, and manipulation, manipulated behind the scenes forces, because Pluto and Saturn together, that has systematic manipulation written all over it all day. Also, um, you know, it's in conflict with Jupiter, the belief systems, the dogma around those constructs, because this is all in the sign of Capricorn, let us not forget, it's housing this experience. Capricorn is the host for Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn right now. This is the collapse of the system as we know it. All these planets are retrograde, they're rethinking, they're reflecting, they're doing things differently like they've never done before and they're coming out with more hits than they can, uh, than they have in other times, you know? Because they're, they know that they're failing, they know that they're dying. Mars is not retrograde. Mars is moving forward steadfast. Anytime you have retrograde, that little R, it's going inward. It's reflecting, it's refining, it's redoing, it's revising. So they're coming at us with new stuff, systems, government, structures, Capricorn, systems, government, structures, uh, Saturn, Pluto, the demise of that. Death and rebirth is a cliche phrase or not. Listen, Mother Nature tells it like it is. You want to hear some wisdom from the mother? Here it is. In a seed, the seed coat, in order for that embryo that is in the center of that seed, okay, to emerge, the seed coat itself must die. It must be released. And after that seed coat is released, it eats the cotyledon, the seed. So that's the, the part around the seed before you get to the seed coat. It eats it. It breaks that down so that the plant itself can grow. In that, there's so many levels of death and rebirth from it. That is the phoenix energy. That is the wisdom of a Scorpio energy, the wisdom 
of Pluto energy, okay? Because Pluto is the modern ruler of Scorpio, whereas Mars is the ancient ruler. So with that said, look what's happening in the chart. Mars, the planet of action, the willpower planet, the planet of youth. I said this in my last video, the planet of youth, the planet of children, young people in general, the planet of the independent warrior, the planet of the independent person, the planet of Americans. If you think about it, we are all very Aries-like. That's why people criticize us for being so self-centered. Mars uh, is very much so an American kind of like concept in Aries. You know what I'm saying? Like we are independent people in certain regards. So anyway, with that said, uh, you know, that Mars if you are in America, that is, you know, it's activating a lot of stuff for us, we know, but the world as we know it, I mean, it's incredible. And we, the people, Mars and Aries, the people, the young people, especially, are challenging these systems. The Mars, the angle, you know, 90 degrees is also a Mars planetary expression, whereas 180 degrees opposition is a Saturnian vibration that it carries within it. But that's a little more advanced astrology. But anyway, um, you know, with the Mars squaring it, it's asking us to manifest. It's not asking, it's telling. There's going to be a change square square is 90 degree angles out in the real world things are manifesting you know oppositions that's uh between relationships that's psychology and we are all improving our psychology around abundance and value value jupiter abundance venus uh how we relate with the built environment in relation to our belief systems as well and this is happening in the capricorn uh cancer axis no other astrologers are talking about this it's just going right over their radar let's talk about it for real it's wisdom in the heavens it needs to be paid attention to look jupiter's belief systems of capricorn the systems of the world check it moving on venus is the divine feminine expression it's the goddess within us all within our culture in cancer cancer legit is a very spiritual sign at its higher vibrations this was considered interestingly enough the portal that all souls came through as they incarnated the portal of man in other words or humans to be accurate about the situation that's the sign of cancer so venus is there saying value what value do we cherish at a spiritual sacred level that makes us feel safe, cancer? What value do we have on offer and, and what, is, what is possible? Because there's innovator energy written over this as well with all this Aries energy. We're, we're asking, we're demanding for what needs to be. We're standing up for what needs to be so with all this justice warrior energy of this uh, Aries activation squaring the systems. It's the people, the individual person as a collective showing up to change that system. That's what it is. I mean, it's, it's giving me goosebumps. You know, I don't know if you can see that as I'm interpreting this. I'm like, oh, that's powerful. Um, so, you know, there's that to consider. I think we should as well. Not to mention uh, the vertex point in Juno over here chilling in Libra, very romantic energy about social justice, about, uh, you know, Libra wants harmonious conclusions. They want fair conclusions. Libra is actually a warrior energy, a warrior of peace and a warrior of the mind, of intellect, but they are still a warrior. They're cardinal in modality and they are air. So they're about the peace. They're ruled by Venus, but they are the social justice piece along with, uh, Aquarius over here, you know, but look, the part of fortune is with Mars. That's a real good indicator that Mars will succeed. Not to mention in ancient astrology, check this out. Mars uh, was not afraid of Saturn. These are the two malefic planets. If you're not already up on that, malefic means bad guy planets and it, their expression, in other words, doesn't always feel soft and cushy like Venus and Jupiter does. But, uh, you know, Mars is not afraid of Saturn in ancient astrology, but Saturn is the old in astrology period mars is the new in astrology in a period saturn is scared of mars mars is bold mars doesn't give a fuck. you know mars is what it is it, but uh mars is not afraid of saturn both of these planets it's so freaking poetic are in their own signs saturn is in capricorn mars is in aries isn't that gorgeous but they're squaring off so it's like tension emerges and like powers that be are at play like the people power mars and aries you know um the independent people power coming after that system the system saturn in capricorn just hot you know hot but who's the support with it's with the liberators because uranus is in town baby that's right at this new moon uranus is sextiling venus 
which is what I was talking about earlier, that feminine principle of what is truly sacred, our emotional understanding of what home is, our definition of home, a Venus in Cancer is a really homey energy. People with this energy in their chart are like really great interior designers, home designers. They have like a natural gift for like just making the home really cute. They're always very cute. They wear lots of cute little things and cute little pearls and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> but, um, and if they're a woman, you know, or who knows any type of man who's into that. But um, with that said, the, the Venus uh, concept here is true because the Uranus is the liberator. Venus is the divine feminine expression of what is sacred, what is emotionally known to be in your stomach, the way things need to be, the way things are deserved to be, and it's home. It's home, it's home, it's home. So we are taking value back. We're bringing value back, you know what I'm saying, to home because cancer rules the home environment as a construct it's a turtle or tortoise in the most ancient forms of astrology it's not even a crab it's a tortoise and it carries its home on its back and it is the giver of life from that turtle egg they give eggs and those eggs proliferate in the waters of the tides of the oceans you know what i'm saying it's really deep it's really poetic jupiter is the belief systems uh, of governments and and the crooks this is crooks ominous energy here y'all that is coming into reform re that r prefix r e prefix uh, retrograde okay okay now it's coming into focus uranus is sending power to these though look uranus is like the mediator between this opposition right now this is abundance in our personal life at a personal level venus opposite jupiter you could be feeling real lush at this the new moon i talked about in my last video because of it but you could also be coming into more abundance through relationship because 180 degrees is a relationship degree so you and another person in some way shape or form are coming into some type of abundance together or lushness together uranus is sending uh, extremely positive energy to both of those planets both of those energies through liberating uranus is the great awakener the great liberator okay it rules higher consciousness and genius energy that's why it's associated with aquarius in modern astrology you know who's more zany and out there than fixed uh, old air you know, fixed modality, old, because it's ruled by Saturn in ancient astrology. This is actually the golden age. And it's kind of like part of the originating story, you know, and then Capricorn is the son of Aquarius. Very interesting stuff. But the point being, Uranus is sending the awakening and Uranus is supporting the benefics. Check it out. Uranus can go either way as a planet. It can be bad, real bad. It can cause strokes. I've seen it cause strokes multiple times and seizures, things like that in people's lives that I know, you know, but uh, it's sending good energy here. It's, a, it's acting very good towards the earth, Taurus, and it's helping activate Venus that rules the built environment, that rules things of value, and it's activating our belief systems, our higher knowledge banks, and it's helping us uh, heal and, and really come through in the, or in the earth plane and heal the earth. You know, that's what we're doing in this process. We're healing the earth. Mercury is here just freshly Kazemian. Remember, he burned that fat off. He's about to enter Virgo. We're all going to be on our square, on our sharp game with our brains okay and our communications even and he's receiving that positive support from mars in the process so he's getting all the energy he possibly needs to do what he needs to do mercury is the deliverer of knowledge and he can go to the mount olympus to the heavens and all the way back down to the underworld you know what i'm saying like that with no repercussions no limitations so i think this is a powerful very powerful new moon i wish you the best please do subscribe if you resonate use your intentions cast your intentions um, put me a comment down below, like the video if it brought you value. And again, if you want to join my course, I am offering that. Uh, email me at wisdomdrops at gmail.com uh, for more details. And with that said, my friend, through next time. Until next time, may the stars be with you. Peace. I can end my meeting. That'd be great.